Pick up the Zombie Killer T. A link is down below. Behind me is the Carl Bonhoeffer Mental Hospital. Its history dates back as far as 1863 when the city as well as the Council of Berlin decided that they wanted to create a madhouse, a mental hospital, one large enough to house as many as 600 people at a time. And over the course of a decade, it began to expand and change in many different ways to the point where there is a very large campus as well as network of medical institutes around me. However, its history began to take a much more sinister turn at the beginning of the Second World War and in the late 30s. At the time, this place was one of the oldest as well as most well-renowned mental hospitals in Berlin. and. It became a central focus of the Nazi party as they began to rise to power and started to use this location very heavily. It's for this reason that this place became the site of several forced sterilizations where thousands of people were sterilized against their will. In addition to that, they began practicing euthanasia. Thousands of people whom the Nazis deem mentally or racially inferior were killed here. They say that when a patient was checked in here, on average they would die in 22 days. And then other groups whom the Nazis often persecuted, such as the Jews, also found themselves the victims of some intense testing as well as just awful treatment within this clinic. Thousands of people were persecuted at this hospital and it was essentially an extermination camp under the guise of a mental clinic. When you dive into its history, everything isn't as crazy or as wacky as we see in game. There aren't these mad German scientists performing all these crazy experiments. Things like that did happen, but they often just happened at concentration camps or extermination camps. Here, people would just be checked in and then they would die not long after due to euthanasia. This place has a dark and sinister history and when you look around it, there really isn't that much that remains of it. This place actually continued to remain active even after the war. During the 50s and the 60s, it was one of the few mental hospitals within West Berlin and for that reason was a very active place. It finally closed its doors in 2006 and this is all we have left. Within that building, many atrocities were committed and there's no way around it. You can't spin this to really fit the game, it's just tragic. And regardless, this is the real life of Arukt. Hey, I want to do a footnote to this video because as I was editing it, I felt as though I didn't do the real life for Rooked enough justice. In fact, I had learned after we had left Berlin that there was more to this place than we realized. It's quite a large campus and what we didn't notice was that tucked away kind of far from the main building where I had shot that video, there was actually a museum. The museum is called Totgeschwiegen, and it's dedicated to the victims of Action T4. Action T4 is the plan that I had spoken about in the video where the Nazis began euthanizing many of the people within their mental hospitals. It was in an effort to purify their country and create a healthy race within their population. There's a museum on site actually dedicated to this. In this museum, you can learn about some of the victims as well as some of the people who worked at this facility and even walk through some parts of the hospital. As I sit here and edit this video, I really regret that we didn't go there, but I wasn't aware of it at the time. And it's not easy just to fly to Berlin just to record a video in a museum. So I wanted to make this footnote so that you guys were aware of this. If you ever do visit the real life Berlin, I do recommend you check out the museum. But if not, I am going to put a link to a blog where I actually first learned about this museum. And maybe you guys can read up on it there. This is where some of the images that I'm showing you come from.